Our view to the universe is a time machine. The farther we look out into space, the further we're looking back in time. In fact, our most sensitive telescopes like Planck and WMAP have taken us to the cosmic microwave background radiation, a time when the universe had cooled down just enough for light to be able to escape into space, just 300,000 years after the Big Bang. This is the cosmological horizon, and it's one of the limits of our ability to explore the universe. We can't directly observe what was happening beyond that point in the age of the universe. And it turns out there are several other cosmological horizons that will make it difficult for us to explore the universe. Some are out there right now, around black holes and the edge of the observable universe, but others will come into effect as our universe continues to expand, and that expansion accelerates thanks to dark energy. Since we're talking about some of the largest scale structures, it's time to bring back Dr. Paul Sutter, an astrophysicist and the host of Ask a Spaceman here on YouTube. Paul, welcome back to The Guide to Space. Hey, thanks so much for having me back. All right, well, before we get started, let's talk about definitions. When astronomers are talking about a cosmological horizon, what does that mean? Right, the cosmological horizon, also known as the particle horizon, which I hate that name, so I like how you're sticking to cosmological horizon. This is the definition of the limit of the observable universe. Our universe is only so old, around 13.8 billion years, and light, as fast as it is, can only travel so fast. So in the age of the universe, we have a certain distance of objects that are visible to us, where the light has been able to travel to us. Now, it's not 13.8 billion light years. That's because our universe is expanding. So when we see a distant galaxy, the galaxy is actually much farther away now because of the expansion of the universe, and that puts the current cosmological horizon at around 47 billion light years. Right, okay, so I understand that part, that we can see light that left the cosmic microwave background 13.8 billion years ago, and because of the expansion of the universe, those regions are now 46 and a half billion light years away from us. Exactly. They're much farther away. Okay. So, so that is, I think that's a fairly, I mean, it's a very confusing <laughs> horizon, but it is one of these horizons. But there are others that are, that are coming into play right now, right? So there's another definition that's commonly used that's pretty useful called the Hubble horizon or the Hubble radius. And this is, doesn't really have like a physical definition like the cosmological horizon does, but it's very useful. As you look out into the universe, the further away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to recede from us. This is what Edwin Hubble first discovered and led us to conclude that we live in an expanding universe. And eventually you'll reach a point, a certain distance, where the recession velocity is greater than the speed of light. And that, by definition, is the Hubble radius or the Hubble horizon. Objects past this appear to recede away from us faster than the speed of light. And this distance is the age of the universe with 13.8 billion years times the speed of light, 13.8 billion light years away. So anything pat farther than 13.8 billion light years appears to recede away from us faster than the speed of light, including the cosmological horizon itself, which appears to be receding away from us at 3.2 times the speed of light. So you mentioned these places that are that are receding away from us faster than the speed of light. And so, you know, since we're never going to develop warp speed travel, we're never going to be able to get to these places. So what is this idea that there is sort of this region that is possible to reach by traveling at less than the speed of light? Yeah, and so that is our uh, what is defined to be the event horizon of our particular patch of the universe. This is for signals or spacecraft or whatever that are launched or sent today, right now. The question is, how far can they reach? Or another way to think about it is if there's like an alien civilization in another galaxy and they send off a flare to say hi, how far can that reach? And that is called our event horizon. Not to be confused with the 
event horizon of a black hole. Right, right, right. I mean, it, I didn't pick these terms. I would pick something else, but we're just going to go with it. It's called the event horizon. It's the limit of events, the limits of causality in the present day universe. And so there are galaxies that we can see right now that we can never reach. They might be within our cosmological horizon. We can see them because their light was sent to us in the past. But if we try to send a signal now, that signal will never reach the galaxy and vice versa. We've talked about time dilation and relativistic travel and how you could hop in a spacecraft and you could travel at 99.9999% the speed of light and you could travel billions of light years in a single human lifetime and yet you still wouldn't be able to reach these places. Exactly, it's because these places are receding away from us faster than the speed of light because of the continued expansion of the universe. And so I can imagine some future alien civilization that has colonized all of the space that could be possible for them to reach, you know, some future robotic civilization. They would be essentially colonizing and, you know, and communicating within this event horizon. Okay, so let's talk about the future then. What does the future hold in terms of horizons? The cosmological horizon continues to grow because as the universe ages, more light from more distant galaxies makes its way into our little observable bubble in our telescopes. But the event horizon is actually shrinking. And the event horizon, the, the bubble, the limit of what we can affect or talk to is shrinking because the expansion of the universe is accelerating from dark energy. So more and more objects, more galaxies are being ripped away from us faster than the speed of light, even though we can see them today. And that limit is coming closer and closer to us every single day. Eventually, in the far distant future, all that will be left will be the gravitationally bound structure of our local group. The Milky Way, Andromeda, Triangulum, the bunch of dwarf galaxies will be isolated because we'll be glued together gravitationally, but every other galaxy in the entire universe will be ripped away from us because of that accelerated expansion. And so our event horizon shrinks over time to just be our, our little local group. Now you mentioned something a little earlier that I just wanted to understand a little better. How are we gonna be able to see things that are moving faster away than the speed of light? How can we even see those? Yeah, that's super cool. This this is a really crazy concept that that as long as you're inside the particle horizon or the cosmological horizon, we can see you. But there is a gap between the Hubble horizon and the cosmological horizon. There are some objects that appear to be receding faster than the speed of light and have always appeared to be receding faster than the speed of light, and yet we can see them. This works because they emitted light it's in the distant past, and as our Hubble horizon has expanded in the past, it hasn't been fixed. Our Hubble horizon actually grown with time. It can catch up or intersect with that light. Now, once that light is past the Hubble horizon, within the subluminal or slower than the speed of light region of what we can see, it can make its way down to Earth into our telescopes and we can see it. That is a very narrow gap that was wider in the past and it'll shrink in the future. Right now it's around, if I remember right, it's around 3 billion light years is the width of that gap right now. And getting smaller every day. Yes, eventually the Hubble horizon and the event horizon will meet up with each other. They will what's called asymptote to each other, where if it's faster, if it's beyond the Hubble radius, it is completely inaccessible to us. But for right now, there is that little slice, uh, little gap. So we can receive messages from alien civilizations that we can never reply back and we can never visit them. That's, that's nice. Yes, they will always appear to be going away from us faster than the speed of light. That doesn't help at all. Sayonara. Yeah, sorry, we are stuck. It's, we're stuck in our event horizon. That is the most important horizon when it comes to communication and being able to affect the rest of the universe. All right, well, there you go. Well, thanks, Paul. Thanks again for having me on. 
All right, well, we've now got a much better idea about the true scale of the universe around us. It's big, but it's not infinite. It's expanding so that much of it will be long gone far into the future. Now, I'm going to put a link to Paul's channel at the end of this video, and you can find all kinds of cosmological and astrophysical videos there, including a recent four-part series on the nature of gravity that was just excellent. So, you can join them live on Thursdays at 4 p.m. for Space Radio. Are you feeling boxed in by all these cosmological horizons? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter, and I send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story, and links so you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com newsletter to sign up. And for a playlist, I'm going to link to Paul's four-part series on gravity, so you can watch the whole thing. So watch that now.